Hello, this is Beamer Bevel, and today I'm going to show you how to download Python and some of the really uh, good plugins or uh, modules that it has, uh, mainly uh, Matplotlab, uh, NumPy, and SciPy. And we're going to use these in our summer course. So, so let's download them, get our PC set up. And this is for a Windows 10 machine and we're going to use a 64-bit version of the software. So first thing is I went in and I found this website here. It's the one we're going to use for downloading. And you got several versions here that you can download it. I'm going to use the executable installer here. So let me click on that. Let's watch this icon and make sure it finishes. So it looks like it's finished downloading the installer. So let's go in and uh, let's look at it here. Um, so I've got it here. So uh, here I have, just like I've done this twice. Okay. So what we're going to do is run this. So let's go in and run it as administrator. Uh, let's add the path here to this. Let's make sure it adds that. Um, we can do this manually, but it's, I always like to let the program do it. And we're just going to do a regular install. It includes idle, pip, and documentation. Uh, pip will be used in the download the modules I talked about. So let's click install now. Okay, there you go, and definitely a big, big thanks to Mark Hammond, uh, who worked on this. This is a great software. Uh, I got all this stuff, so let's go ahead and close this out. All right, and I can leave this for later on uh, if I want to bring it back. But let's close this out, and let's go to here and make sure that it installed. And so it looks like it did add some. So let's get into Python here and see what we got here and so we got this here and so we got all this stuff here idle is the integrated development environment that we want to work with and so let's go in and create an icon for this so I right clicked on that went to more and then open file location and I'm going to go right here and right click on this and I'm going to send it to the desktop All right. and so now we have the icon for this right here and so let's just double click on it and make sure that it works Okay, so the thing I like about this is you can actually go in and do an interactive mode. Like I can say 2 plus 3, and basically it prints out 5, or I could say x equals 3, and y equals 7, and then I could say z equals x plus y. And that's good. And to print it, I can just basically go in PRINT and I could do this for Z. And there it is. Okay. Now, you know, if I go and do this in interactive mode, it could be a real pain. And if you go and try to repeat it, I mean, you can save the way the workspace, but it's a much better way to do it. You can go into a file and do a new file. And in here, we can put all our stuff. Uh, we can basically go in and say x equals 3, y equals 5, z equals uh, x plus y. Okay, and so now what we can do is print z, and this is just real, real quick just to make sure it's working. And so now what we can do is we save this file and I'm just going to save it in documents 
Okay, and I'm going to call this test Python. Okay, that pi, and save it. And I've done this before. Okay, and so now what we can do is we can run it. And there you go, five and three is eight. Okay, and I can run it again. I'll go back to here and run it again. And there's again, and I can go back and change it. And so this is much better because you got all your commands. You can do whatever you want, have your program. And so you can run your program just like this. You just have to run it from idle. Now there's some things you can do that maybe we'll talk about later. You can add to this to make it a self-running type script. But this is plenty good for, for most, most of the time. And uh, you don't have to worry about all the other stuff. Okay, so, so this works. Let me close it out and let's close this out now what I need to do is I'm going to need to go in and download some other software but before I do that I always like to once I download the software just go ahead and just basically do a restart and make sure that the path command and everything's set up um, if we go in let's, let's look at the path command I did a right click here and I went to system and it seems like every Windows 10 machine I look on is, does this a little differently here. Um, let's go to System Info and Advanced System Settings, Environmental Environments. And either you're going to have system variables or user variables for this. And it looks like for here, what we've got is we got some commands for here. If I go in and look at this, there we go, Python. 38, so it's got some paths set up for that. Uh, 38, and also in scripts. Um, so if I run in here, then, then I can run the script from there. Um, so let's cancel that. Let's see if there's any paths down here. Uh, let's look down here. And let's see, whatever. So do we see any Python things down here? Yeah. Oh. And if I go in and look in the path here, let's edit. Be careful when you're editing this. You don't want to script your paths because then it might not work on some things. Uh, but it's pretty easy to add stuff, and there's a lot of YouTube videos on this. But let's see, we've got Java path, System32, Firefox, Node.js, hmm. and then bin. That and a few other stuff here. Okay. Anyway, let's just cancel out of here. So, what I want to do is just make sure everything's set up right. So I'm going to just cancel out of here, cancel out of here, and get out of here. And anyway, so I'm going to reset, uh, reset it, and then come back up. So let me go ahead and. Um, and uh, reset it. Now I'll come back in a few minutes. Well, hello, I'm back. Um, we installed uh, Python, and what we did was we went ahead and, and restarted it, the computer, to make sure that all the path commands are read in and everything. And um, what we want to do now is just go back and look at the path commands again to see where. The path is set. We looked at it before, but let's look again. So what we need to do is right click on this, go to system, let's pull this down, let's go to system info, advanced system settings, and environmental variables. And here again, this is the system variables, and we don't really want to mess with this unless we have to, uh, but most of the time we can just play around with the user variables here and this is the path that we have so let's look and see so we have actually two paths that we entered um, notice where users be available app data local programs python python x this and here and so this is where it's installed um, now it used to be everything would be installed under c and then program files or our program files x86 but here this is being downloaded here so we got something under scripts and we have something under the Python here. So anything under this we executables we can run and anything under here we can run.
Okay, so let's go look at those. Uh, let's cancel out of here. And, uh, and um, also what we're going to do is go back to here again and double check that we've got all the Python stuff installed here. And there it is. And we got the stuff. And we've already set up a shortcut for the idle. Okay, so let's go in and let's look in those folders. Let's see what's installed. So we go up to here, go to the C drive, go to users, go to the bevel, go to app data, go to local, and what we should see, and notice there's something called pip, which we're going to be using a little bit later. Uh, let's go into programs and go to Python. Okay. So the stuff that's in here, this is where the first path is, the stuff that's in this folder. So anything in this folder, like these executables, like Python, so if we type in Python, Python 3, Python 3.8, whatever, uh, basically we can run programs because we have a path to this. So we don't have to come into this folder and run it. Uh, the computer will know where it's at. Okay. Um, so anyway, so, so these are the executables that we can run under there. Now, it also has a path for scripts, and here is where we have our, our pip commands. These are installers that we're going to be using. Um, so, okay, so, so we, we've got those there. So, now that we've looked at that, that's, that's interesting. Um, let's go in and, and let's see how we can download matplotlab because that's what we want to do in this video but I wanted to show you the paths and how everything's at and where everything's located at least on, on my Windows 10 machine here okay so I'm going to close out this and now what I'm going to do is let's go back into Google Chrome and let's go in and I had something here for matplotlab okay and so if we go under here then installing the official lease, we've got this. Now, it seemed like on my newer PC I was able to type this in and everything was fine, but on this machine here, which has the same version of Windows 10, uh, if I go in and type this in, it gives me errors. And let me show you what it does. So, first off, let's just copy this right here. And let's go in, and for a long time all we had was command prompt, but now we got Windows PowerShell, which is a really great tool. So let's double click on this. And notice where it puts me, it puts me in users, be bevel here. But that's okay, if I go in and do any Python or anything, it should find it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and uh, control B, all right. And so this is what it said to type in and run, and so let's run it. Okay, and it's going to know what Python means because that's one of the executables that's under the in the path that we showed. Okay, so we hit enter, and basically look what it says. It says no module name pip. Okay, and I was going crazy trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. What is this stuff? And so here's the thing: is is what I found out is the Python dat dash m run is a module or whatever. Uh, that's not really what we want to do. Really what we want to do here is instead of running this python-m stuff, if we go back here and look at this, really all we need to do is the pip install u pip, okay, and then pip install dash u matplot library. Now the other thing that I noticed was I was getting some weird results. Uh, if I went in and typed in just the pip install, Basically, it would give me an error saying, hey, look, you don't have uh, privileges or something else. Consider using uh, user commands. So what we're going to do is we're not going to really do this. We're going to do something a little different, similar to that. So let me type this in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do pip, okay? And this is the installer. And what we're going to do is install. And then we're going to do dash dash user which is what the error message had told me previously and I'll spare you uh, having to look at that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do upgrade now the dash u right here that's what that stands for but but 
Uh, seems like I was having some problems with that. Maybe that was just all in my mind. But anyway, uh, let's do that. And then we're going to do PIP. So pip install dash user. And let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see here. Okay. So pip install dash dash user space dash dash upgrade pip. So what we're doing is upgrading pip to the latest version. Now I've already got it installed there. So I'm not really sure what it's going to say here. But it shouldn't come up with some error saying, hey, uh, no module named pip. Because pip is in one of the path commands, right? Okay, so let's go in and let's run this. And it says, already up to date, pip and C users there, which is what we just saw. Okay, um, so that'll work. Okay, and, and like I say, as long as you go through and verify that you have pip installed, then you should. Uh, and so this is what we need to do. That's all we need to do. So it's upgraded. Now what we want to do, if we go back to this document here, it says after you upgrade pip, which is the installer, then what you want to do is go in and install map plot library. Okay, and so here's the same thing. And this dash m, python dash m, we don't have to do that because pip is in the path okay that's allowed in in our system our, our user environment so what we're going to do is we're just going to say pip and we're going to do the dash dash user and we're going to basically go in and do the upgrade or you can do the install here so let's let's go back and uh, let's minimize this and what we do is pip and we're going to do install and we're going to say dash dash user again and we're going to do upgrade and this time we're going to basically type in m-a-t-p-l-o-t-l-i-b okay so pip install user there and here again pip is in the path so it's going to know what pip is uh, for some reason it doesn't like this running as a module or whatever no module named pip so we go and hit this, and like I say, I've already got Matplotlib library installed, but it should give me an error. It should say, well, hey, it's already there. And so let's see what it does. And it says, already up to date, requirement already satisfied, skipping upgrade, blah, blah, blah. So, so everything's fine, okay? So there are the two commands. And so let me just expand this again. So... You want to go in and check that your paths are all set up, and they should be if you click that uh, in a uh, make path, you know, when you installed Python. And so you don't want to do that. You want to do pip install user upgrade pip, and then pip install user upgrade matplot library. Okay? So everything should be fine, so I can get out of this now. Okay, let's go in and let's verify that this works. Let's just do a simple plot um, here. Just bring this up. And let's go in and let's create a new file. Alright. And let's go in and put some stuff in here. So let's go in and do... Um, let's see, how about... Let's do x equals 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and y equals uh, 0 comma 1 comma 4 comma 9 comma 16 comma 25 okay and what we want to do now uh, and actually up above here let's go in and do some importing um, in C, we have like like an include an H file or something like that. Well, here in Python, what you do is you import the modules that you want or the libraries. And so here we're going to do m a t p l o t l i b uh, dot p y l a b. 
So matplotlibrary.pylab and as plt. So what this means is that from now on, instead of going in and using this full qualified name, matplotlib, and whatever functions we're doing, all we have to do is use plot. And so everywhere the program sees plt, then it will interpret that to mean this. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get down to here and. Um, do something here. So let's go in and let's do the plot. So the plot is going to be PLT. And here again, this actually means this right here. And we're going to do PLOT. And we'll do um, X and Y. And then we'll do PLT.XLABEL. And we'll just do X for that. And then PLT dot Y label. And we'll do Y for that. Okay. And then down here we'll do PLT dot SHOW. Okay. And there we go. So we're importing the plot library. And so if this works, then we should get a plot coming out. And this is a real simple one. We'll do much better plots than this. But this is just something quick and dirty. So we need to save it. So let's save this as, um, what are we going to do? Let's go to documents. And uh, this is the one we want to save it as. And yes, we're going to overwrite that. Okay, so now that we've saved it, we can run it. And there you go. Uh, and these are pretty cool plots. Um, you can actually go in and zoom. Uh, you can do a bunch of different things, but we just wanted to make sure that it, it actually plotted. Uh, but you got the X and the Y. Very, very simple uh, plot here. We can do much much prettier ones and more elaborate ones. So anyway, it works. Okay, so let me close this out. Uh, and then go and close this out. And close this out. And let me stop right here. Go take a break. And when we come back, what we're going to do is download NumPy. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Um, what we want to install now is NumPy, and I went to this uh, location here, numpy.org.install. It says installing NumPy, and there are several ways you can do it. And what we want to do is use pip install. And so finally we get a document that tells us how to do it. Okay, that was really confusing before, but we know now we just do pip. Okay, and what we're probably going to do is put that user thing right in the middle here too. So pip uh, dash dash user install numpy. All right, so let's go in and let's try that. So let's go into our PowerShell again. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to do pip and we're going to do uh, install. user and and then we're going to basically go in and do uh, n-u-m-p-y okay so pip install user the only difference is I put uh, a user there and if we had an upgrade we might could do an upgrade to actually why not do that Go up here. Um, let's go U P G R A D E. Okay, and see, and there's, it's not on there, so it should upgrade it just fine. Okay, so pip install user upgrade, and let me make this bigger again so you can see. So pip install user upgrade numpy, and let's hit enter here then.
So far, so good. Okay, so it says uh, successfully installed. Let's see, what is this warning? It says script is installed in C, which is not in scripts, which is not on the path, but actually it is in the path. It's a different path. So, um, so anyway, we, we're okay because remember we had two paths that we saw. We had one was Python 38, and then it was scripts, and this is how we got the. Uh, uh, pip to run. If if we didn't have this folder, then we wouldn't be able to run pip. So so this is a little weird here. Uh, okay, so we're installed. So what we want to do is go and check it. So let's close this out. And let's go back and bring in idle again. And let's go and file and open up the file that we just had, the recent file, which is uh, test plot python. And what we're going to do is a little bit different here. Here, actually, we went in a, 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 a range of values here. But instead of doing this, we're going to use NumPy. And so let's go in and do this. So let's do another import. And this time, we're going to do NUMPY as NP. OK. And instead of doing this X and Y stuff like we got here, we're going to use some NumPy type stuff. And this is where NumPy is really strong. And we're going to use a lot of NumPy. So let's go in and let's define x to be equal to np.arrange. And let's go in and let's do from minus 8. Uh, comma to plus 8 comma and let's do it in increments of 0 0.1 okay so this creates a range of values it starts at minus 0 0.8 then it goes to minus 7.9 minus 7.8 all the way up to 7.9 to 8 so these are the increments over this range of values that it's doing it um, that's a very useful function there's another one we'll be using too, and more advanced ones we'll talk about later. Uh, and then let's go in and let's just create a function. And so let's do something really, really, really pretty cool. Let's do. Um, nah, I should do something simple. Let's just basically go and say y equals x times x. Okay. Now we'll talk about functions in here later on, but we're just doing something really simple. So let's don't make it any more complicated. So, so this is the only thing. So NumPy, if NumPy wasn't working, then this would give us an error, and this would give us an error. So let's go in and let's save it. All right. And let's go in and run it. And there we go. Pretty cool, huh? So now we got NumPy working. We got matplotlib library working. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and close this out now. Let me take a break. And when I come back, I'll show you how to do SciPy. All right, so let's close this and close this and close this and, and come back. Hello, I'm back. And so now what we want to do is we want to download SciPy. And I went to this location here. And it's got what I need right here already. So pip install SciPy, same format, using the pip installer. So I think we can handle that. We know what we really need to type in. So let's go and to our Windows PowerShell. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see it. So we're going to type in pip, and we're going to do install. And then we're going to do the USER, and then we're going to do the UP, 
P-G-R-A-D-E, and then we're going to do S-C-I-P-Y, okay? So this is pretty much what we've been doing. The user, because it says, hey, it's not allowed access, and then the upgrade, if it doesn't have it, then I'll put it in. Okay, so let's go in and let's run this. So far, so good. Okay, so let's see what packages it installs. Okay, it's installed now. It took a long time, so but I kind of stopped that. So let's check this out and make sure everything is okay. Okay, let's go in and let's test SciPy. And I've got a example that I got off the internet with some minor changes to it. Uh, let's see, recent oh, this one here. Uh, what this program does is it uses the Matplotlibrary, it uses NumPy, SciPy, and what we're going to do is we're going to plot a sine wave, and then what we're going to do in the time domain, so that's time is horizontal and amplitude is vertical. Then what we're going to do is frequency domain, uh, and using FFT, and that's where we're going to do the FFT pack here. And so first we're going to plot in the time domain, which is the sine wave. And then when I close that out, then it's going to plot the um, FFT. Okay, so let's go ahead and first save it again. And run. Okay, so there's the sine wave. And uh, we'll play more with plots, but we're just checking to make sure this works. Okay, so let's close this out. And there's the time domain. So you notice that plus and minus five. So this is what you would see on the spectrum analyzer, similar to that. Okay, so so far we've gotten everything working here. So that's good. We've got um, we got uh, Matplotlib very working. We got um, NumPy working and we got SciPy working. Okay, um, what we want is the final thing is download OpenCV. This is an image processing type um, program uh, that you can run under Python and it's going to be the same kind of thing we probably won't be doing this stuff until the fall definitely in the spring but let's go ahead and download it and maybe we'll play around with it so uh, here's what we got to do we know what to do so let's go ahead and open up um, the uh, PowerShell Okay, so let's make this a little bigger here so we can see what we're doing. And um, I did this earlier, but what happened was <laughs> I wasn't plugged in to the outlet and the battery just died on me. So let's try it again. Hopefully it's still run. So we want to do, as usual, we want to do the pip uh, install. And we want to do the uh, user, user, and we want to do the upgrade, and then we want to do the opencv-python, okay? So let's double check that real quick. So opencv dash python okay so that should do it pip install user upgrade so let's hope that the last time when it died that it didn't do anything bad okay it looks like it did okay Let's go in and let's test it out. So, uh, okay, now that we've got OpenCV installed, let's test it out. 
So let's go and bring up idle again. Open up the test file that I created. So open. And let's see, I think I got it in documents. Python setup. And adding images. Okay. And uh, just to show you what I'm going to do here. In documents here in Python setup, I have two images here. Okay, there's one image, and here's another image. And what I'm going to do is add them together. I'm going to take a portion of each one's equal portion and add them together in this program and end up with a final picture. So that's what this does is basically we import the CV2 OpenCV library. Uh, we read in the first image, read in the second image, and then the third image we're creating is a weighted average of image one and image two. So you see it's like 0.5 of this and 0.5 of, of this one. And then what we're gonna do is show the image and also we're gonna write it. This time we'll write it as a ping file image 3 and then we'll clean things up. Okay, so let's go in and hit file save and let's go to run alright and so there we go it, it actually took part of that image the other image I, I didn't do any sizing probably need to go and do some sizing but the thing is it showed that OpenCV is 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 working there's no errors here so let me close that out um, and so no errors here so we can close this out and let's close this out and let's go we should have saved a uh, File there. So if we go to documents here and we go to Python setup, there should be a ping file in here somewhere. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, so if we double click on this, and there you go. So I've got this image here superimposed over the other image, and it's working. Okay, so we, we now have have um, matplotlib, we have uh, numpy, we have scipy, and we have opencv. And there's other other libraries out there. Uh, Python is, is a very well developed language. There's lots of people using it, lots of libraries being developed. Um, there's libraries for just about everything. Uh, there's some really good libraries for cryptography and everything else. So anyway, this is it for us. Uh, later on, maybe we'll install some more, but uh, this is it for probably the next year. All right, well, have fun. Uh, well, I'll do some more videos on actually doing specific things using these different libraries that we've installed. Okay, have fun. See you later.